The year is 1880. Still reeling from their newly founded independence, the Authority rides a wave of newfound Catholicism into undiscovered territory in an attempt to tame the last stretch of the American frontier. Hosted by brigands and strange individuals, a small saloon in the even smaller, newly formed town of Tombstone, Arizona is transformed into the makeshift base of operations. A young Axton Hornsby Exploration Society rises into prominence after the recent successes of the acquisition for the Authority's European branches. Given nearly no oversight, it sends exploration parties under several facade company charters in the United States. The Protectorate are pushed to their limits as they hunt anomalies into this unknown territory and offer contracts, all while concealment is chaotic as ever, continuing to catalog item manifest and establish newly private forts or operation across the wilderness. Many dangers lie on the road ahead, but one thing is certain. The Authority will have to learn to bend what it once held dear to survive or break in the process of keeping it in the face of a changing world. Welcome to Tombstone, folks. If you've come here from out east or out west or, God help you, from Europe or further afield, then I warn you, this place ain't going to be like anything you've ever seen before. The war between the states did a number on this country, and if you're expecting swanky offices or scientific equipment, you won't find it out here. This is the frontier. After the war, all manner of strange things drifted out into open country. I'm not talking Indian shamans or bandits. They've always been here. No. I'm talking sinister things. Things forgotten that we never should have remembered. There's a band of anarchists calling themselves the Methuselah, working strange experiments in dead towns, making ghosts of their own. For every church revival that does God's work, Two more exist to spread things that shouldn't be spread. You'll see folks selling snake oil and miracle cures that deals with the devil himself. Sometimes they won't be folk at all. Sometimes they'll be other things, just pretending. We're out here with no support. Uncle Sam is barely tolerating our presence. The Indians sure as hell don't want us here. But if we're not out pushing back the frontier, Cajun and stomping down in the darkness, no one will. I don't care if you're north or south, white or colored, we're all fighting for the same thing out here, to keep this frontier sane. Tombstone will be your base of operations, your home away from home. If you're with Axton Hornsby, you might know the drill already. The expedition and its parent organization will do everything they can to keep you fed and housed and armed. In exchange, you go out there chasing rumors. You find the evil, the impossible, the devilish, and you trap it and bring it here so we can figure out what the hell to do with it. You can't contain it, you kill it so it can't hurt people who shouldn't be involved. Our people have set up boards and trade posts along the way, deep in Indian territory, but for the most part, you're on your own out there. Keep your wits about you. Excerpt from a speech by Mose Curie, Director of the Tombstone Expedition, December 31, 1879 Mescellaneous Rumors Organized rest of bounties in descending order later. Doug Field staff, with the help of the Sheriff's Department, helped to scrounge up a list of reported unusual sightings and curiosities, albeit poorly maintained and often vague hearsay, either investigated firsthand by society dregs or put up for the bounty, every lead is at least considered. Reeves Gold Mine closed down five years ago for very little reason. In a town near the mountains, but there's been migration away from the old town for the past four years. Folks have stayed silent about it. They seem terrified when asked about the mine specifically. William Duskin, son of former coal miner. My Albulina went missing for a few days and came back different. She's a religious lady, but she's been praying every day and constantly looking at the neighbor's house. One of the ladies drowned herself with her kids there. Every night I think my abuela is crying, but sometimes I hear it outside the house. Hector Osuna was inquiring about the name Askuk outside church grounds. Lights in the Nevada desert have been seen roaming the skies. 
From what or why I don't know. I usually try to hide when I see them. Not applicable. Some folks around the far west are scared of the grizzly bears, eagles, or mountain lions here in California. Me though? I'm scared of what I saw in the mountains the other day. Bigger than a wagon. Bigger than any animal I've seen. Guy named Dusty was passing through the saloon on his way east to meet his kids. Some weird looking salesman just sold me medicine and ain't nothing but horse piss. He called his company amazing. Now I don't feel so good from it and need a doctor. Salesman had a really lazy eye and his left leg looked limp. Stefano Lane, Assistant Sheriff, two weeks before disappearance. I keep hearing some old drunk yelling Tengu Ombre at night, but it doesn't make sense. I live six miles away from town, but he sounds like he's outside my door. Should not have moved to Oregon. Curtis, retired rancher. There's a gunslinger whose gun seems to shoot people dead. But I don't mean like they get shot and they hit the floor. I mean they get shot and all that's left is their clothes. Curtis Wheeler, gang member, two towns away. Stay away from the coast. Was at the sea in the Pacific, fishing ten years ago. I thought I saw a giant man swimming there, but he didn't have legs. Adrian, relative of Duskin family. Recently in town to see relatives. Dead men walking. Really. As in corpses rising from their graves from Texas to Oregon. Don't know why and don't know how, but I reckon it might have to do with the towns in Arizona. Joseph Foreman. Practicing mortician. Missing person reports increase every year in sand during the winter. Some even say they see more and more build up year after year. They say California is called that because there was a caliphate there. But where the hell is it? Walter King, anthropologist native north of Kingston.